I discussed a little bit about what boundaries look like or, and why they're important. I think one of the things I want to mention before I talk about some practical tools is that struggling with boundaries or being in a work environment where there's too much work um, and it's not sustainable and you're really struggling and you just can't cope. It's not necessarily as a result of a malicious setup. So when things go badly and especially over extended times and it impacts us badly because we're exhausted and there's so much work and overtime, it's quite easy to fall into the trap of thinking it's intentional. Nobody cares about me. It's all terrible. Um, it's a toxic environment and it's an intentionally toxic environment. And so, so sometimes when we talk about boundaries, we kind of feel like, but Yvonne, does you know are we just saying that this is now bad companies and bad people that's not what i'm saying in most cases these types of things happen over time without necessarily realizing it and can happen with the best of intentions so i'm not talking you know when i talk about this i'm not saying oh companies are bad evil uh malicious uh environments can land up being toxic even with the best of intentions. Things can go wrong, even with the best of intentions. So I'm not sitting here going, all organizations are terrible. And if you're struggling at work with overtime, um, it's because, you know, it's because there's some malicious intention going on there. Um, there's some malintent going on there. That's not what I'm saying. So I want to make that very clear to start off with. Okay. What tools can we use? And I think I'm going to start off by listing them, but each one of them is going to take a little bit of a discussion because a lot of it's easier said than done. And we also want to understand what does this actually look like? So here's a couple of things that, that we're going to need in order to build boundaries to save our sanity <laughs> and our time and our mental energy. One, we've got to be aware of, it takes planning. You've got to think about this. You've got to plan. It takes active preparation because some of the stuff You've got to make sure that you go in prepared um, and you do this in advance. One of the challenges we have is that we end up feeling like we need to say no at the time. So um, we need you to do overtime tomorrow and we go, well, I have to say no in the moment. And that's what building boundaries is. And that's very difficult to do. That's generally going to create more trouble than anything else because um, people don't expect it. And now they're going, well, I don't know what else to do. I was relying on you to do this and now you're not doing it. And that generates a lot of resentment and that can generate a lot of negativity. That's very different to preparing people for what to expect from you so that they know in advance, um, I'm not going to be available. Okay, so a silly example, but don't wait until the moment when the emergency happens that you go, okay, now I'm putting my foot down. That creates drama and that's very difficult to do. Um, and that lands up being very negative and create, can create conflict. So the more that we do, we plan in advance, we prepare, the less likely these situations are to come up and the easier they are to deal with. Don't wait until somebody needs something from you right now and then go, okay, now I have to say no. That's tricky. Okay. So planning, preparation and practice. Um, I've always hated, and I think most of us accounting types do, I've always hated situations where I'm required to do any kind of role playing. You know, anything in a team organization or workshop or anything that required role playing, I was like, fake an injury, get out the door. <laughs> um, but it is valuable because sitting down and saying, what would I actually say in this situation? How would I deal with the situation is very different and it gives you a sense of empowerment of, okay, that is difficult to say. Is there a better way to say that? And it gives you, it gives you a greater sense of control. It is very important to practice how you, even if you practice this on your own, um, it's important. Like, can I even articulate this? And some, some of us, we struggle with that, you know, even to just say the words even to ourselves or like use a family member then and go, okay, but it's difficult to say. So practice is important. Um, it's not instant. So we've got to be aware that this is something we're going to build over time, especially if we haven't come in the door with boundaries. When we try and shift boundaries, um, people are very confused. And it's a bit of a knee-jerk reaction. It's not necessarily intentional, but they're like, I wasn't expecting this from you. And, and, and now I've got to change. Like, what am I going to do here? So it's a natural thing. Um, so it's going to take a little bit of time. Again, planning, preparation, right? It is going to require some tough conversations, but that's not necessarily the same as saying, you know, I'm going to, like, there's going to be fights, there's going to be conflict, we're going to get HR involved, kind of thing. Tough conversations to us is sometimes just saying stuff that we're normally thinking that we wouldn't say out loud and finding better ways to say that. So sometimes tough conversations are just putting down what we need. That's tough. 
I'm not talking about we have to have sh screaming matches and create lots of drama. That's not what I'm saying when I say tough conversations, but it still is tough to do. Slowing down, very important. Slow down, because when you slow and you take conversations slower, then you can actively think about how do I want to deal with this? How many times have we walked away from conversations and we're like, that's not what I meant there. Like, oh crap, now I'm sitting in this position um, and, and that's not what I meant to say. Or now they think this, or now I'm, I'm stuck with this again. So slowing down for a bunch of reasons, both for your benefit as well, for the benefit of the other person and the situation. It's, it's a, slowing down is a very valuable tool, okay? Shut up. <laughs> That's another tool. Shutting up is a great management tool, wherever you are. And what I mean by this is because of our personality styles and because of our desire to, to help out, to want to do, to, to impress, to perform, etc., 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 and 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 a lot of us will struggle with imposter syndrome. We have a tendency to jump into gaps. So if there's a gap, if someone's saying, "Hey, can you know?" If there's a room of people and someone's going, "Hey, can somebody do X, Y, Z?" If there's silence in the room, we have a tendency to jump into that gap because it feels awkward, um, and we don't want that person to be standing there going, "Hey," and we're like, "We want to perform," or or whatever. Even if we don't want to do that thing. We struggle to hold our silence. So we have a tendency to jump into the gap if there is a gap. And we didn't want to do it, but we just can't help ourselves. We'll end up volunteering even when we absolutely don't want to do it because there's a gap. And so for some reason, we feel like we have to fill a gap. And it's also a habit. So when there's gaps, the people who have less boundaries are more likely to jump into those gaps and fill it. People who have healthier boundaries will just keep quiet. When there's volunteering going on, you know, um, can anybody do this? If I am, if I have healthy boundaries, I'm just going to sit there and go, I, in that situation, I don't even have to say no. I just have to keep my mouth shut and be prepared to live with the silence. If there's a two minute silence, I've got to be prepared to just stay quiet. Sometimes that's all it takes. And there's a good possibility that someone else in the room is going to jump into that gap. Don't let it be you, okay? Don't jump into gaps. Shut up. <laughs> Just keep quiet, okay? Pay attention. Pay attention to the culture in your environment, to the habits of people around you, to the way that things are done, the way that decisions are made, um, management processes, and pay attention to yourself. Watch what you do, watch how you react so that you can start to see trends and you can start to see patterns and you can identify and you have a greater sense of control of how to deal with it. But what do you, you know, when this happens, this is what happens. And when I say that, that is what happens. And this person has a tendency to react in the following ways. Unless we actively do this, we have a tendency to kind of just go with the flow and we're very reactive because there's so much else going on in our lives. So we're not actually going, hold on, I'm seeing a pattern here. Um, and so let's deal with that. So pay attention. Awareness. Awareness of how environments work, of incentives, of behaviors, and be very aware that if you don't take control of the situation, you're going to pay the price for it, but there's a very good possibility that you're going to become part of the problem. A couple of the tools, and again, I think I kind of think I need to go into each one of these in detail a little bit more so that we can talk about the practicalities of this, but some of the tools, very valuable. Planning, preparation, practice. It takes time. You're going to need some tough conversations. Slow down. Shut up. <laughs> pay attention and be aware. Okay, so these are kind of these are kind of the summaries of the tools, and you may have gotten some value from that, and you can think about some of that as it is. But I think I think it makes sense, you know, based on the stuff that I deal with 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 people, you know, with with young professionals and um, students that I deal with. I think it makes sense to go into some of these in a little bit more detail to kind of see what this actually looks like.